you talk. Welcome back. Yes. I'm so Thank glad you. the Rays have the night off right now. Oh, the so am I. You have no idea. Games, four game, three I don't game know. series I am, with Kansas City. I, you know, I normally wear my fingernails a little bit longer than this, but I've been biting them waiting <laughs> in, in anticipation. anticipation for the next Devil Rays game. But and, and I've been biting my nails in anticipation oh. for our next guest because I'm so excited to be talking to Avish. I'm oh, yeah. Say it wrong. Yeah, Avish Nash Kashik. Avish, can, Avish Nash, can you hear us okay? Okay, hello. Hello. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Hi, I'm fine. Uh, thank you very much for calling in and being part of our show. We've been reading your blog and enjoying it this, the past couple of days. You've been busy. Oh, thank you very much. So, uh, can, can I, first of all, can you tell me yes. how to pronounce your name correctly? <laughs> oh, yeah, if you can just say Avinash. I'm trying to be Madonna, just one name, Avinash. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh. I love it. I'm trying to be not a tune, just be Janet. Yeah. <laughs> it's not working. It's not working at so all for you. It's you working were, for you, though, bud. You were a consultant for Google, and then you turned into Google's analytical evangelist. What is that? Oh, yeah. So I, I, I was, you know, just regular working, and I, I was writing a book and stuff. And at the time, Google said that they wanted me to work for them. And I was like, oh, I'm not so sure, you know, if you're going to survive. I'm joking. <laughs> and, uh, and so I decided I, to come I'm not sure the web's going to take off anyway. For a year, just to, just to give it a try and, and see how, how things go. And, and I spent a year working as a consultant. And I really had, had a great time. And, and uh, it's a phenomenal company and things like that. So at the end of that experience, you know, my one-year contract was up, and you know, at, at, at the end of it, I, I decided. And Google also is very persuasive, so I bet they can be. Agreed. What were you consulting uh, Google on? What do they need your help on for a year? Yeah, so I actually worked very closely with the, the seven. The Google has seven different analytics tools, essentially that provide data. Uh, that Google has um, and help you make better decisions about your websites and your marketing programs and paid search and search engine optimization. So I work very closely with these teams to help create um, better sort of products and services, uh, help uh, Google's customers understand this data better so they can figure out how best to sort of spend their online marketing dollars, how to improve their uh, websites, how to improve ROI. So essentially my, my, my title says analytics evangelist for Google, but, and which, which sort of has this external focus, but uh, I actually spend a lot of time internally at Google uh, helping create better products and services when it comes to data. So I, I get to play with a lot of data. You know, um, so with your data, your analytics, your analyzing, your yep. world with Google, all the people, your time, and all everything you've done there, Yes. At the end of the day, why websites suck? Yes. I mean, you I had to have pissed that. off a whole lot of people out in the advertising marketing world, bro. You got to tell us about that. Oh yeah, absolutely. No, I, 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 I gave a talk in Adage. There was somebody from Adage, and they, they wrote the, the article. Um, I should have used the word "suck less," but, but the reality is, I, I, I think it's kind of true that today, if you go to many websites. Um, they, they, it, it's as if, you know, they were not ever tested on human beings before they were put out there. And uh, one of the primary things that there were, there were sort of two main reasons for that. And the first reason I said is most website owners have a very poor understanding of who their customers are and what their preferences are. And everybody sort of wants to copy Apple or everybody wants to copy and be some, like someone else and spend very little time in understanding their customers and their needs and wants. And, you know, if you're selling shoes, perhaps you need to create a site that, is very appealing to people who like to buy shoes rather than, you know, people who buy iPods, for example. So that was one reason is pe many website owners don't understand their customers. But the other reason is um, from my, now I've spent sort of 10 plus years working in many big and small companies and, and on, the, on the business side of things. And I found that uh, I, I, I created this acronym, I call it the HIPPO, and I say, you know, HIPPOs create websites and, and not sort of developers and, and researchers create websites. And HIPPO is an acronym for the highest paid person's opinion. And then I find that it's very true that when you sit around a table and you say, no, how should our website look and what kind of offers should we have, what kind of pricing we should have, the person with the highest salary opens his mouth or her mouth and everybody else then does whatever they want, whatever the hippo wants you to do. And hippos are typically not very closely connected to reality of customers and customer centricity. So um, they're probably paid way more than, than, you know, anyone else. So because they don't understand their customers, we create experiences for hippos and 
it was not our customers. They suck. You know, they, it ends up with websites that are not very functional. It ends up websites that are not very useful and productive for customers. Well, uh, and, and that's why sort of most websites suck because hippos create them. Well, you know, how do people react, marketing and advertisers, mar react to web they their, when their website, when you say their website they're, suck? They're the culprits of this whole thing. Well, I don't know. You might have, have a Shanash, you must know. What, what kind of feedback are you getting back from people who are reading your blog? Yeah, so, so the amazing thing is when I, I give a lot of talks and, and I speak at a lot of conferences and stuff, and one of the most surprising things to me is that uh, people take it very honestly. And I, and I think that a lot of people will come back. When, when, I, when I say, you know, here is most of it suck because hippos create them, everybody in the room laughs. And, and, right. and, and the reason that they laugh is not because it's sort of funny, that they laugh because it is truly reflective of their reality. And, and these marketers and, and even VPs and CEOs will come and they will... They they will um, tell me that it's, it's amazing to hear somebody from the outside say this because they never have the courage to say it. And, and at, uh, at one point, I, I was in a conference room with a very, very big company, and, this, um, and I said this term, and, and from the back, you know, I, I, I heard a really old lady. She was sitting quietly for, for 40 minutes, and she said, I am the hippo. <laughs> okay. You know what's well, so I, funny? <laughs> because I think Rob is our hippo. At yeah. our company, Rob. No, it I has nothing to do with that. It's, I think Rob is I base what I, 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 I fall into line exactly what you're saying. The navigation, the understanding, the I'm ultimate client, client experience, sure. the, the, the patron's experience, the person that's going to be there utilizing that website. It, you know, your shoes thing, if they're another by shoes, it, might, it doesn't necessarily need to look like an iPod website. You know, just right. the yep. aesthetics are important, but the aesthetics yes. need to mean something, too. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly, and and and, and uh, you know, and, and, uh, the thing that uh, one of the wonderful things about uh, the web is you can try so many things. You can you can you you don't have to sort of uh, think of one way of doing things. And I always tell I keep, tell people that you know your hippo has just as much right to have a good idea put on your website as does the janitor in your company. <laughs> and, 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 right. and the thought is right. not to crush sort of creativity but to sort of open up the creativity process and let everybody sort of put ideas out there and then not just to let the hippo win in, in every argument in every case. Avinash, before we run out of time, why don't you tell us about your book, Web Analytics, yes. an hour for a day, or an hour oh, a day. Yeah, absolutely. The, the book is um, about helping online marketers and, and helping anybody who touches the web um, to understand data, to make decisions very quickly, to sort of open up a tool and within 10 minutes be able to find some actionable insights. And so that helps expand the definition of what it means to do web analytics because I say that you should use analytics tools, but you should also do surveys and usability and things like that. And, and the other thing is because the blog, uh, my blog was the reason that the book was created. So 100% of the proceeds that I make from the book are actually donated to charity, the Doctors Without Borders. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's why, yeah. why did you choose to do that? You know, it's because, you know, I started writing a blog because I just simply love writing and I do it for the love of it. I don't want to sort of profit from it anyway. So when Wiley said they want to make it into a book, I thought, you know, what a great opportunity to take something I love doing and see if I can, you know, use it to raise money for two causes that I love. And so far in a year, the book has raised about $32,000 and that's money that's that fantastic. I could never, ever afford to give away. So it, it's become this medium of, that has allowed me to raise some more, way more money than I could afford. Alvish, <laughs> give us your your contact Fantastic. information and your uh, blog link so people can check You're you proud out. proud of yourself. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, I always tell people that uh, all you have to do to find me is type Avinash into Google. A-V-I-N-A-S-H. You type that into Google and you and find I bet me you're the first I one that comes on up. I bet you're the first <laughs> one that comes up. Good job. Do you, do you, know, how to, <laughs> do you know how to do search uh, uh, engine optimization? Oh, absolutely. I'm kidding. I was <laughs> joking. He's joking. I spent a lot of time doing Thank I'm you very facetious. much for calling in. I know how busy you are, so yes. we really appreciate that. Avatash, have a happy 4th of July weekend. Yes, happy 4th of July. Thank you. You too, guys. All right. Peace, We, we are going to take our next break. Who was interesting, by the way? Who was interesting? He was. Oh, oh, was oh, oh, he was. Yes, he was. Somebody who can just do one name thing is cool in my nice book. That's cool, man. Love it. We are going to take our next break. When we come back, we're going to be talking to Red Frog Marketing. I see a red frog out there, too, and he's doing, she's doing something with somebody Sign over there. Sign language of some sort. Is that what they're doing? I think so. They're not supposed to talk. Media Talk is presented by Tampa Digital Studios and sponsored by The Creative Loafing. We'll be back with The Red Frog.